All right, hello everyone. My name is Taryn Sebula, and I'm a Senior Manager of Member Engagement here at the Toronto Region Board of Trade. Thank you for joining us at our home this afternoon. Um, as we begin, or before we begin, I'd like to acknowledge that this land is home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people. Our offices are located on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations who believe in intergenerational responsibility for the well-being of today and tomorrow. So again, thank you for joining us this afternoon for the Career Foundations Workshop here in our semi-brand new home on the waterfront. Our venue features a large gala room if you wanted to make your way after the session to take a look on the other side of the venue space. We've also got four standalone large meeting rooms, one of which we're in this afternoon, breakout spaces, a 22,000 square foot outdoor terrace, a state-of-the-art digital studio, and our trade cafe, which will house our post-workshop networking between 1.15 and 2 p.m. this afternoon. So do feel free to peruse around after the event. Um, and just so you're all aware, all of these spaces are available to rent by non-members of the board, as well as members who enjoy a 25% discount. If you have any questions about membership, um, at the board or would like to learn more about how to host an event for an unforgettable experience here at 100 Queensky East, feel free to snatch me after the event. But speaking of unforgettable experiences, today we welcome one of our valued members, the Career Foundation, to discuss integrating community employment resources into your talent and hiring strategy. This workshop aims to educate hiring managers and employers on various training, recruitment, retention, and wraparound supports available through community resources that would help you improve talent and skill shortages. So with that, I am now going to pass the mic over to our esteemed speakers, Lance Barrett, Director of Workforce Development, and Shauna mckenzie Onita, Area Manager of Employment and Placement Services. Thank you very much, Tyron. It's such a pleasure to be here. I think I want to move up to the terrace. So anybody want to join me, let me know. <laughs> um, yes, it's wonderful to be here and it's wonderful to have this conversation with uh, all you all. Thank you for taking your time, sharing your lunch with us is very much appreciated. Um, before we actually get started with, uh, with our content today, I want to make sure we get a chance to introduce each other. Oh, get to know uh, each other a little bit more and why we're here, what challenges we're having, because that's real. Challenges, HR challenges and talent challenges are real. Um, and then we'll get into some, some discussions. An inspiring way to end off the introductions. <laughs> um, I really like, I'm gonna actually take that line. Everybody deserves a chance for change. So I'm gonna go right into HR solutions at no cost. So what I hear on the table is, um, so the HR challenges that we want to address, we're hoping to do it within our own capacity as an organization, uh, financially, people-wise. Um, and what we're hoping to bring to the group today is there are supports out there to help the business community to address some of these challenges um, through funded programs. And that's what I'm going to be focused on today. The reason why I say funded programs is all the logos that you see here, this is going to be specifically to the Career Foundation and the programs that we offer, the employment programs we offer, and who funds those programs. So as you can see, this is just us, right? So there is a lot of support uh, from the government for specifically HR employment-related challenges um, across job seekers and across employers. I believe the disconnect is that a lot of job seekers know about these supports, employers don't. And that's what I'm hoping to bring some knowledge here. It's gonna be basic knowledge because I'm hoping that we can have a chance to um, uh, be more one-on-one, -on -one, talk, talk to you individually uh, at a later time about your own specific needs. But uh, as you can see, uh, the government of Canada, the province of Ontario, Employment Ontario actually falls onto the province of Ontario because it's under the Ministry of Immigration Training in Ministry of Labor, Immigration, Training and Skills Development, um, Ontario Trillium, uh, Inequality, which is a part of Ontario Home Builders Association, City of Toronto, Future Skills. So these are all organizations that have 
uh, budget or funds uh, ready and available to uh, provide the financial support that uh, industry need to ensure that you can tap into talent that you might that you may not be tapping to right now, and uh, that's also why we went uh, with the term community employment services. Um, I hear on the table. I need to find talent. I need to retain talent. I need to attract talent. And at the Career Foundation, we deal with talent all day, every day. So when I hear that there is a labor shortage, I and because we see so many job seekers, and Lance will go into that soon, um, for me, being in the middle, I really see a skills shortage. So people are there, employers are there, jobs are there, people are there. The, the disconnect is the skills that's needed. And how can we work on that middle ground? And how can we compromise and maybe come to a new bottom line or a new entry level, let's say, um, to start to create pathways so that this demographic of individuals can now be um, a viable talent pool for our employers to go to. So I'm just gonna switch over to Lance, who's gonna tell you a little bit about, about the Career Foundation, and then we'll uh, continue from there. Perfect, thank you. Um, so Career Foundation, who are we? We're a charitable organization. 34 years, established in, in uh, 1988. And we really look to combine government, private sector, and obviously um, job seekers. And one of the ways we do it is through programs. So here, identify and address labor market gaps. And, and that's where some of you come in. You're having trouble hiring, um, whether it be in construction, whether it be whatever industry. Uh, we, we meet with you, identify a, an opportunity that we can build a program, sometimes through private, sometimes with the government funding, um, really build a program to meet the needs and train people to, to meet a need um, or address a labor market gap. And the, these programs, uh, what they're really designed to do is um, instead of getting somebody off the street that you have to skill up, train, basically from, from zero. These programs, we, we put them through the program, some last six weeks, some last 14 weeks, and really give them the basic skills um, and knowledge needed to, to come into um, a company and have a almost a hit the ground running, have an immediate impact, immediate productivity. It saves a lot of effort, a lot of um, money for the employers involved and really looks after a need that's identified and, and you know, it helps, helps the employers get people and get good qualified people. So what we're going to dive in today is how can your business actually do what we're saying? How can you actually integrate community employment resources uh, through government funds uh, and also industry funds? So when I say industry funds, uh, sometimes uh, uh, associations that represent a group of employers also are able to um, approach government for certain uh, sector needs. Um, so we're going to talk about how do you do that through recruitment and selection? How do, how do we help with training and retention? And what type of wraparound supports we have for employers? We hear the term wraparound supports a lot for clients, especially clients in the community when it comes to life stabilization. So when someone has a job, when um, my friend there is helping a single mom or coming from a shelter system, they need a lot of wraparound support, mental health supports. But how do we equate that to when an employer is now ready to hire from the community with individuals that does, des does deserve a chance? How do we support the employers to make sure that's a tr that's a good transition for them as well and that their uh their bottom lines are being met uh, they're getting productivity they're getting trained people and people that can um uh, step into a role and hit the ground running um so we're going to start off with uh, the recruitment and selection uh we have two different uh, pockets here because we think that uh when it comes to finding talent uh, there's a lot of activity <laughs> and a lot of time that goes into that so the recruitment and selection portion. So uh, the Career Foundation and other, and other employment service providers, we support you with the uh, physical recruitment part of finding talent, find, finding you know, a, a new person to fill a role. So if you have a, a, our opening, 
when you partner with a the Career Foundation and or, or other employment Ontario services, you can actually just share that posting with us. And we have the in-house capacity and individuals to help to uh, circulate that posting. Uh, we will connect you with job seekers of diverse backgrounds and skills because that's who we see all day, every day. Anyone that is out of work, not attaining full-time education, have the ability to walk into our centers, register online, and get job search support. So that's an immediate talent pool. Um, and so we will connect you with those job seekers right away. Doesn't cost a thing. Um, we review resumes and pre-screen for you as well. So having the ability to, to have someone present a short list of candidates based on, on your needs and, and your requirements, we are able to do that as well. Uh, we refer individ individuals for interviews and we arrange job fairs. So if you are doing mass hiring, I'm, I want to think of um, uh, CB Richards Ellis. Yeah, exactly, even on trades, when you're hiring for the facility side, you probably have volume um, of uh, needs. So we can help you coordinate uh, meeting a whole bunch of people at one time, going through first level screening. Um, so as you can see, by having a support system that can come alongside you and help you with these activities, it really saves a lot of time from the other HR functions that you need to do. Because within HR, recruitment is one thing <laughs> that you need to take care of. Uh, so having organizations that are funded to do this and come alongside employers to help you with this is really what we want uh, to come across today, that this support is available. And then another thing we do save money. I do want to make a caveat here that community employment services, I will say we work mostly with entry level to mid level careers um, and we and we partner with um, uh, different staffing firms when, for example, they have a really good relationship with an organization, they're working with them for top talent, but because the relationship is there, they also can help them with their entry level needs. Um, we partner with them as well. So how we help with that is we also advertise your job opportunities on our website. The Career Foundation, even though we're a nonprofit organization, I will say that we have the same business um, business uh, opportunities and business mindset as a for-profit organization. So we focus on marketing, we focus on outreach, we focus on making sure that our clients, job seekers and employers through us have the best possible reach and the best uh, possible vis visibility, I would say. So we uh, make sure that uh, the job posting that you share with us is not just within an, our, our internal job seeker database, we post it out for you as well. Um, and then we also have some of the training costs that you're concerned about um, for those who qualify for the job through what we call training incentives. And I'm gonna get into that a little bit more on the retention side, but for your entry level to semi-skilled semi type roles, um, the community employment service space is definitely an available resource that can help you fill some of these roles quickly. So you can focus on whether internal operations or really focusing on partnering with um, uh, specialized recruitment firms for your top talent. And uh, so if you have, if you're not spread too thin, <laughs> if you have someone that can come beside you and help you, help you with some things, then you can probably really hyper-focus on some of, some of the granular things that you need to work on. But with um, even just filling one position, I have some of my employers tell me that even a receptionist, well, is there such a thing anymore, but or call center, what or trades, construction, labor, you can get 500, 400 resumes. And with the opening of um, international students and um, you know work permits and that kind of stuff, being able to drill down to that to fill two roles or three roles is a lot of time. It's a lot of time. But uh, community employment services, that's all we are funded to actually do. Um, so that is our business and, and that's the partnership that we have with, with our employers. So I'm going to turn over to Lance to talk about the specialized programs we have, how they come about, and, and, and what, that, what does that mean to you? Sure, thank you very much. So up here you'll see some specialized programs. This isn't all we have, we just wanted to highlight some. How did these come to fruition? Basically, it's through conversations with industry leaders, um, really identifying a gap or identifying a need um, that they have that they're looking to fill. And how do we partner with um, certain levels of government, private sector to fill those positions? So I'm going to, uh, the two on the left, 
um, targeted towards youth. So completing the circle program targeted towards um, youth 15 to 30. And they, uh, they have multiple barriers to employment. So uh, basically it's a program based out of three locations, Mississauga, Hamilton, and Toronto. Um, and we've had some really great results. Um, I think 83% of the people that went through our program are still employed, retain employment. So um, part of all of these programs, you'll have the recruitment, you'll have the, the learning, the, the training, and then you'll have the wraparound support that um, the Career Foundation provides. And that wraparound support um, is really integral to getting them to stick, the, the, the retention. So, um, so completing the circle, uh, general carpent carpenter pre-apprenticeship, um, 18 to 29, obviously um, looking at people, getting people into the carpentry trade. Um, this is in partnership with Mohawk College and the Carpenters Union number 18, I think, 18, okay. I was guessing a number there, but, um, and, and basically, we met with a whole bunch of employers within the carpentry trade and they were having a really hard time in finding talent and especially retaining talent. So what this program does is it will give entrants into the program and these are generally an unskilled entrants. It will give them about 14 weeks of training. So they will go through their witness. They will go through all their safety training and they will get a really a general foundation of what it means to be a carpenter. And when they get placed with our employers, um, they're going in there and they're able to produce right away. The, the employers are not having to train them on, here's how to measure, here's how to use a, a skill saw or, or whatever, here's how to frame. They're going to have that general basic knowledge. And that really helps in retention as well, because um, going through the program, through the, um, the vetting of our, of our participants, we'll be able to know who are the serious ones um, versus um, just if you're hiring them off the street, if they had a good interview, but they're not serious, it's a problem. You may, you may lose them. So, so those two over there are uh, for youth, empowering abilities program. This is um, supporting people with disabilities and getting them, providing the supports that they need to get them ready for the job market. And once again, great success here, and I have to read the number, 86% of the people that we have put through the empowering abilities program um, retained employment after I believe it's six months. So they, we, they were placed, and they stuck with it. The employers were extremely pleased with the work they did. And it, it's just, it's giving people a chance, basically. You're, you're really looking at um, a lot of people who have the skills, they just need the, the confidence. And then going through the, the program gives them the confidence that they need to, uh, to perform well. I'm going to skip this one because I'm gonna let Shauna cover that one because that is her baby. She started it, runs it, um, and I would not do it justice. So I'm gonna skip that one. Um, Ontario Bridge Training Program. These are um, newcomers who have um, education or skills in another country that they come to this country. Uh, we have three tracks, HVAC, um, IT and network cabling. So when they come to Canada, they have trouble getting into um, their field of study or, or their field of, of profession. And what this does is it really prepares them for the Canadian market. Um, they have the skills. Um, we just update it for, for Canada. And we really um, provide a lot of wraparound supports to help them and educate also employers on, you know, th there's these people out there, it, it's an untapped market. We're going to help them get ready for the Canadian market, but they have the skills, they've, they've done it in their 
they've either studied or done it in their um, home country. They're just new and, uh, and it's, it's had great success as well. 83% um, retention there. So, and lastly, uh, the Work Fairly program. This is from our women's department. And what this is, is really looking to get um, self-identified women into IT, the IT sales sector. So um, a, a gap was identified um, in IT, especially in sales. Um, and so this program prepares women, they go through training, Salesforce training, all the training that they need to be able to succeed in the IT market. And also a key part of this program is really educating and working with employers to get them to understand that um, this is available. Um, success in this is, this is kind of new, so I don't have any percentages, but I can tell you about eight months in, we've already uh, trained 92 women and they're going through the, uh, the placement. Come September, 144 women in Ontario and BC will be trained and then placed with IT employers. And then OHBA. Thanks, Anne. So the Ontario Home Builders Job Ready Program is, is the same thing. And I hope you're seeing a theme here where we identified a gap. We came together industry uh, representatives, candidate representatives, and we designed a training program. And that's really the theme we're hoping to get across, that this is a model that has worked for many years, that any employer, any sector can really tap into. Ontario Home Builders Association, no different there. Uh, we all know the construction industry. Everybody's retiring tomorrow. Um, so <laughs> there is a huge labor shortage. Um, and, you know, no surprise, the Ontario, the Ontario Home Builders Association has over 4,000 members. Um, so a lot of people, they're, they're going to need to build homes. We know the uh, very aggressive home building um, goals that even just the City of Toronto has. Uh, so there was a need for labor shortage. Um, the skills, the, the higher the journeymen's were there, the skilled trades were there, but they were finding that the labor shortage of construction labor was a great, a huge need. Um, so again, they came alongside with us and we made a proposal to, uh, to, to the ministry and we got funded to do that. And we're in our, going on our third year and within year one and two, we've introduced uh, close to 300 new entrants into the construction space. Um, so when I know we all have like varying needs here, but I do hear uh, some some very common goals with attract, train, retain, right? And we're showing you these a type of programs uh, to show you that we're do we're we're helping to attract, we're helping to start the basic aspects of training that is informed by industry and we're starting the retention wraparound supports that's needed when someone get into a space um, that an employer might not always have the capacity to do so the whole point of these programs is to ensure that when when you partner with a community employment resource you you get a more well-rounded person and because the training is actually informed by industry we have advisory boards for each program we have employers that come in and even do the training lead workshops we're not making things up we're not guessing what an industry needs we really want industry to come be come beside us so we can train the job seekers that maybe you're not tapping into as a yet. Um, I do want to backtrack a little bit when I say entry level to semi-skilled. Yes, that is the majority of the community we serve. We want to make sure we're helping those furthest removed from the market. They're furthest removed, they're not removed. <laughs> so we're hoping to bring them back on while seeing the needs of the employers and where can we meet in the middle, right? Um, but I also want to say, but because the basic eligibility requirements for a job seeker to use any of our services is out of work and out of school, uh, we can take the tech space right now. There's a lot of ta talented, highly talented individual that are being laid off, unfortunately, and now coming into a very competitive space, right? So someone that's actually maybe been working for some time, they will come to us even, you know, very, very skilled individuals, but they probably need some help with, for example, uh, the job search tools. Maybe someone has needed to do a resume in a very long time and that kind of um, supports. Uh, so... For again, we just to continue on the job seeker diversity. Uh, the reason why we thought it was good to actually show this this slide is because 
uh, all these uh, percentages of people that are securing employment, we want our employers to really think, were you a part of this um, movement? Were you, uh, we wanna make sure that you're a part of tapping into these new entrants that are going into careers, upskilling themselves, continuing their careers, and these talented individuals can now be exited out to you. So that's the thought we want our employers to have. Am I, am I incorporating these programs and these services that I can actually be a part of at no cost and seeing if I can bring some of this talent into my talent strategy? Um, on this side, I thought it was good to show this as well, to show that um, when you do share a, a position with us, when you do come alongside with us, um, you know, we do have a big push on, on marketing as well. Uh, we want to make sure that our employers get as much visibility on the same social spaces that you are, you want to be there as well. So I wanted to show just even the reach of the client. So we have our own digital job board at the Career Foundation. Uh, so even when we do a posting, um, we had this many unique visitors. And I think that's even outdated as of a month ago, right? So just the additional reach without the additional cost is what I'm trying to uh, bring across here. Uh, this is available literally as of today. Oh, now, training and retention is uh, also something we, we support with. Um, now, we, we do this typically when um, you have an opening and uh, let's say you have, you're accessing one of the hiring incentives. So hiring incentives is a uh, government funds or wage subsidy that is available to employers where they hire someone that needs a little bit more support to start in the job. Uh, they can start from day one, but there's more onboarding and support that's needed. So the employer is able to get a financial reimbursement for to offset or minimize the cost of that, of, of that onboarding. Um, so with the training incentives, um, it's typically anywhere, we typically try to match um, the probationary period between one to 12 weeks, a general probationary period. And it could be anywhere from three to $5,000 per person uh, that is being hired on by the employer. And we help to develop an on-the-job training plan. So when we're developing that on-the-job training plan for that specific person, what we're finding with some of our medium to small employers that actually taking time because now there's an incentive. So it's a kindly different hire, but now taking time to look at the role, look at the training that they can actually do and the training that they need, even though they're preparing this training plan for this one person, I find a lot of my employers and I've been in the space since 2010, that training plan now becomes something that's new and revived that re revised that they can use organization wide. So because the employer is taking that time to actually onboard this one person specifically, they get into a thought mode. Right, and they look at the job description like, oh, I maybe I can actually don't need this right now, and maybe this is more important right now. Because when you get into scheme of things, you just and you have a busy business, you're just doing things rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat, right? Um, especially for the smaller employers and the medium sized employers. So, and so that's how we one way we we on the side help with the training plan because we partner with the employers to look at one specific job and then that training plan can probably now be used in other areas as well. Um, we also help with accessing information on workplace accommodation. So our Empowering Abilities program, we have a, I don't know the exact title, but it's accommodation specialists, I think. So someone that actually goes into an employer and help them, uh, help them um, decide what their accommodation needs are, what they can actually incorporate and actually provide them to resources that they can get uh, additional accommodation sources. So internal with you within your organization, you probably don't need to hire someone to do that uh, separately that can come as a, as a result of working, for example, with the EAP program. You get that value added support. For trades, we help with the registering and apprentice and accessing financial support. So with the new Skill Trades College and, and, and the new setup there, um, that, that's gonna be a one-stop shop. 
Uh, but even sometimes the job seekers that you hire, they want to track their, their hours, they're getting sponsors. We actually help them navigate that system. Because sometimes a one-stop shop, you still there's a road that you still need to, to, get, to take to get to that one-stop shop. So we help them navigate that as well. So, and we conduct job training, um, job retention training to, pre to prevent and resolve some issues. So even having a mediator or someone in between to help. But the whole uh, point of these programs is to make sure that if you partner with us from the beginning, we are already integrating a lot of your needs um, into this person before they get to you, um, which saves some time and actually builds the retention um, rate um, a, a little bit better that way than someone just, like you said, maybe that did really great in an interview and then they start and then you have all these things to be able to take care of. Um, uh, the retention piece as well, just continuing from here to over there, uh, in addition to um, being able to help someone uh, get onboarded well with the company, we help them develop their skills ongoing. So job seekers or anyone that is uh, registered with the Career Foundation or even the general public, because we have general um, information people can access, we have a library of training tools so people can continue to upskill themselves um, and it's at no cost to them. You know, so this is also something you can, and when someone is constantly learning, they're constantly building confidence and now they can take on different or more responsibilities at the workplace. Um, that, and that goes a long way in retention as well, that sense of belonging and growing um, and, and constantly developing their skills. So we do have uh, different services like, uh, like Grow with Google, Amazon Web Services. We have a program with Accenture. Um, and these are personal development LMS type courses that anyone can access to develop their own skills. And we offer that to employers. Uh, and we offer that to employers for the job seekers they hire through our programs, but even for your own workforce, if your own team needs to upgrade their skills as well. Um, and again, our digital learning center actually house a lot of this training tools that we have. Any questions so far at all? Yeah, that means I'm doing a good job. Okay. <laughs> So this is near and dear to my heart, which is the wraparound supports for employers. I believe, I strongly believe that uh, employers, if we want employers to come alongside us, to tap into a talent pool, maybe they have not tapped into before, they need the support. They absolutely need the support. Um, so this is why we have developed a workforce development center. So what that means is that um, we come alongside employers and we find out what your needs are. And we bring your needs in house and then we uh, customize them with the program. So well, first of all, we find out what your sector needs uh, and holistically what the sector needs, like we did with Ontario Home Builders Association. But then we drill down into a little bit more and say, what does your company within this sector needs? Um, and then we try to make sure that that's a part of, um, if we hear of new proposals that's coming out, new upskilling proposals that's coming out, new, um, new entrance proposals, pathways that's coming out. So with us having this information and consulting with you through advisory committees, through um, uh, consultations, consultations like this and, and bringing this data in-house, uh, we are always on the pulse of the different funding uh, from the different um, levels of government or organizations that have funding. We're always on the pulse of that. So when we have this data in-house and we hear something, then we can say, oh, my employer or this association just tell us this. This could be an opportunity to do a proposal to see if we can address this need. Um, and we consider that wraparound support because we are constantly making sure that you have a place to go to, that you can share what those needs are. We can take it and that we can put in a package and see if we can address that with some government money, <laughs> essentially, or some funds that's available. Um, accessing diversity and inclusion tools. So a guide for employers. So as we're all focusing on diversity, equity, um, and inclusion and belonging, um, it's just great for employers to have something that they can go to really quickly. Um, they can look at best practices, look at case studies, and have an area that they can um, access these, these resources from. When you also have access to a workforce development center as an employer partner, um, 
or it's you also become um, you're also tapping into one stop resource for labor market information and trends. So we have partners partnerships and memberships in labor market think tanks, and then we bring that information in house or employers have it. So if you want to see, um, you know, where your industry is going a trend, I'm sure you're doing your, your own research, but we also uh, complement that. We make sure that we bring that information to you as well through through the partnership. Uh, employee resource for diverse integrated workforce and sector based advisory committee. So this is where we really have employers come in and tell us what they need, teach us what they need, and that we can design that into a workforce development program that literally affects you. You design training that's going in, that's affecting the people that's exiting to you. And it becomes a full circle model that way. Um, this is one of the favorite things I love to do clearly when I'm here today, uh, but I think it's, it's, a, it's a very value added service. And again, all the things I'm talking about today that Lance, are talk, that Lance and I are talking about today is of no cost to employers. So to uh, hope I'm doing good for time to, uh, to wrap things up, because I do want to get into the, some Q&A, um, just some service highlights. So, you know, we connect with thousands of job seekers. We customize job placement, match and services. We, uh, there's unique programming for diverse talents. So if you're hiring women, youth, um, you know, the BIPOC, the BIPOC population, there's unique needs for those individuals. And we try to address them ahead of time before they, they, they come out to you. And we continue to stay with them while, while, while they're working. So you have that ongoing support and everything else I mentioned, the ongoing job coaching, um, cost savings through wage subsidies. Oh, there's one thing I didn't mention about the training incentive. So, there's two pockets of training incentives. There's one for those that is new to your organization, so a new person, uh, but there is also the Canada Ontario Job Grant. So the Canada Ontario Job Grant is for existing employees that you see some potential in that you want to upskill them. Um, and that is a grant available to employers is up to $10,000 per employee. Uh, it has to be a tangible, um, what, what can I say? It has to be a tangible training. So it has to be provided by a third party trainer. There has to be some form of employment growth after that training. But that is when you're looking at your own internal workforce that you now want to upskill individuals, which aids a lot in retention. Uh, there's a financial support with that. And that is called the Canada Ontario Job Grant. So that also helps with um, making sure you can continue to develop your people and get some financial supports for that. Um, and then the workforce planning and development services. So um, those are just some of the, uh, the topics that I wanted to just, uh, touch on today. Uh, but again, the main theme is that these supports are available for employers. We come alongside you, you come alongside us. We have the I don't want to say the people bank, but we see people all day, every day. And I, be, I do believe that there is a skill shortage, but I do believe it's one that can be um, uh, fixed. I believe it's one that can be fixed uh, with the right supports and with government funds that's available uh, to, to fix these, uh, to, to these challenges by having these um, workforce development programs informed by industry and, and tapping into individuals coming into a new space, um, we can start to slowly chip away at the challenges that we're having. And that is our speech. <laughs> Thank you. I do wanna open up for sharing and discussions. I wanna just go back to some of the challenges that we talked about when we started. Um, can you, just, with, just from what you've learned today, uh, is there anything or even the model that I talked about, does, do you see that being a potential solution or something that you think could actually benefit uh, or help to address some of the challenges that, that you're facing uh, currently? And anybody can talk.
children elevate to the house of the Lord. This is all that the Lord asks of us. Um, so with HVAC, it is a... Um, because you need to at least have the minimum your G3, um, I think what, what, what we're able to do with the bridging program, we can take someone that has that, has that experience and they probably can go through a fast track, fast track G3 and get their TSAC ticket because that, that's the minimum that you need. Um, and actually the uh, HVAC program, they come out with their G3 already. So they're not fully licensed. They're on their way to being licensed. And a lot of the individuals that actually come through our um, bridging program for HVAC, because they're doing the G3, they kind of just made the decision to do the G2, uh, which gives them more uh, ability to, to more ability to work in HVAC. So um, because that is a mandatory for the Canadian government, that G3, we can't really transfer, but it does help them to go through that process faster. And they end up getting their G1 in, in, in so much quicker uh, than someone else. Yeah, the 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 um, sheet metal um, 313D. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So with the 313D, and I've actually done some uh, some apprentices for that, um, you can actually start someone from first level and just sponsor them. Uh, you just need to make sure you have the journeyman that's there, that's able, because I believe uh, the ratios is more friendly, but I don't, I still don't think it's one-to-one -one yet. I could be wrong, but the, if someone wants to do a full refrigeration and mechanic uh, license, you can start from first level apprenticeship and you can just sponsor someone. Actually, that's for an employer. He sponsored a justice involved youth that wanted to go to, to that space. So you can sponsor someone and just start their hours there. They actually don't need the G tickets. Yeah. It's nice to have, you know, and it's good to have that ticket, but you can just start. So you, so even someone from a trades program that wants to do that path, you as an employer, because it's the employer sponsorship that starts their hours, right? But you can actually just start from level one, say, I'm willing to take on this person as apprentice, as long as your ratios is good and you can start their hours and you can just continue with them through all through. And what's great about the completion side of things is that the government will give the employer a bonus for each level they complete. So it aids uh, the employer saying, well, I'm gonna train them and then they're gonna leave me. And you know, so it, and so that's why sometimes employers it's hard for them to start that first level. It's the hardest year is the first level year and it's the greatest risk. Uh, so the employer, so the government saw that as a, as a challenge within the completion. Um, and so now the government has allowed uh, employers to actually get a bonus if they assist someone to complete each level of their, of their apprenticeship. Yeah, the hunter your question? Yeah. Perfect, okay, thanks. <laughs> But even the apprenticeship program, um, I have uh, I've done apprentices with employers I'd never did apprentices before. Uh, so we even help the employers go through that process um, and start from the just registering someone, getting the registered training agreement. But yes, it also depends if you have an internal support system to help that person log the hours, match them with the journeyman, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, but we we have supports for that as well.
it is quite open as long as your business operating in Ontario and you're providing you know safe environment and and the, the you you meet the minimum employment standards but quite open quite open Yeah, so there is not a specific grant for diversity hiring per se, but the training incentive is a very flexible grant. So the training incentive as an organization, I can say I would like to access a training incentive so I can hire a newcomer women into this position and provide them some additional support. So um, that would be where uh, the, the organization can fit their own hiring priorities using that training incentive um, uh, fund because that's very flexible. Um, for the Career Foundation itself, there is no specific bucket for diversity hiring. However, uh, places like Ontario Trillium, United Way, uh, they tend to have social enterprise and kind of um, uh, you know, they call them seed grants as well. So when um, there's a new project and someone wants to kind of pilot a specific hiring process. So there's other, um, there's other uh, funds that's available on, in, the, in the broader space of funding uh, that can probably focus on that. But, uh, but for the Career Foundation, what we use to address some of those needs is a training incentive um, uh, grant that we can give to employers. Completing the circle. Yeah. They're actually still out of work and out of school. So these are in, these are students. These are young people that have um, have uh, multiple barriers, life life stabilization challenges, and um, and they need to work. Unfortunately not, because the uh, the government funded programs, the reason why we have to coin the services no cost is because there's no cost to the users of the programs, but it's taxpayers dollars and it's government funds. Um, and we have been given the mandate that our priority are uh, individuals where their residence or their stay in Canada is permanent permanent uh, in order for these funds to be used. However, we have independent um, virtual services that anyone can access. Uh, so we call them assisted and unassisted. So an assisted person will be someone that's enrolled in a program, registered in a program, go through pre-employment training, that kind of stuff. But then we have a whole other space or e-learning library. Uh, we run workshops that's available to the general public and that's assisted service, unassisted services. So anyone that needs those basic job search tools can, can access those, those supports and we make them, we make them available. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So we actually within our uh, career foundation world, <laughs> we have uh, what we call them employment service and placement specialists, and they deal with job seekers all day, every day. And then we have employer services consultants, and they deal with employers all day, every day. So uh, you actually have a dedicated ESC. Um, they will get to know your business. They will can do a, a site visit if, if that's available. They will kind of understand the requirements of the job, what's not in the job description, but really great to have. Um, and they will kind of take that, li that lift off your hands. Uh, you just share them the job hosting and then they, they take it from there. Yeah. Yes, yes, we, we share with, 
Yeah, uh, Indeed is one of them. We share, you know, so some of our smaller employers, they cannot afford the sponsorship or of Indeed, or they need to put that money to somewhere else. Uh, we have the ability to post. We have a sponsored subscription on behalf of employers, and we post it on Indeed, and we give them maximum uh, visibility without them having to do that cost. Absolutely. Yeah, we have a, a strong community partnership. So for example, we have community partners that we do work with. Ms. Rebiki is an Aboriginal specific community partner. Uh, we work with um, uh, various different community partners that work on other life stabilization concerns and we come in with the employment piece. Um, so we, have a, we sit around community partner tables as well. Um, to be able to address holistically what a community is going through um, and how employment and economic support help to lift the whole uh, culture and the whole opportunity within that space. So yes, we're not silos, we're not standalone. Um, we try to go to where the need is. I'm a firm believer that um, the service providers we need to work it out. So when someone comes to one person, it's a one-stop shop for them and we give them a resource and a package. Any other questions? What am I doing for time? Still good? Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> okay, well, um, Lance, anything done? Well, and uh, Sean and I will be available. Any questions, please seek us out. And I think our contact information is there. So thank you all.